Greetings, folks. Welcome to the third annual Honoring the Indigenous Spirit Award Ceremony. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the third annual Honoring the Indigenous Spirit Awards. My name is Randy Arsenault, and I'm the manager of the Indigenous Spirit Fund. I'm coming to you today from Native Child and Family Services of Toronto, and I'm very thankful you could join us. For those who may not be familiar with the Indigenous Spirit Fund, or the ISF, we're the philanthropic arm of Native Child and Family Services of Toronto, a multi-service agency that works across 20 locations in the city, delivering more than 100 culturally grounded programs and services to thousands of individuals every year. I joined the ISF a little more than a year ago after a 20 year career with Toronto Police Service. My involvement with Native Child and Family Services of Toronto actually goes back decades, both professionally and as a community engagement officer and Indigenous liaison officer, but also as a volunteer sitting on the board and supporting various community events and initiatives. For years, I've witnessed the remarkable work this agency does for Indigenous children, youth, and their families. It was an honor to join the team when the opportunity presented itself. It also gave me the opportunity to work directly for Ken Bouchard, a renowned figure in the Indigenous social work community, as well as founder of Native Child and Family Services of Toronto, also former director of the Indigenous Spirit Fund. If you know me at all, you know that I only become involved with causes that make a real difference, those that have a lasting impact on the lives they touch. I'm very proud of the work that we do at the Indigenous Spirit Fund, striving to improve the quality of life for Indigenous children and families, especially those impacted by the child welfare system and residential schools. We do this by working together with our valued partners in the community, people such as yourselves, to raise funds and awareness for Indigenous issues. Today is all about Indigenous spirit, and more specifically, celebrating this warrior-like spirit that lives inside Indigenous youth everywhere. The Honoring the Indigenous Spirit Awards program was developed in 2020 to recognize youth who have overcome significant challenges and achieved their full potential. This year, we received dozens of nominations and selecting the five participants was no small feat. You'll get to meet the award winners and hear their stories in just a little while. So we have a very exciting program planned for you and we're ready to start things off in a good way with Rosary Spence. Rosary is a musician and entrepreneur with a powerhouse voice and an innovative spirit. Rosary strongly believes in the ability to heal communities through the strength of the youth and the wisdom of our elders. Rosary possesses an extensive background and experience as a designer, a performing artist, and an arts facilitator, and currently works for Native Child and Family Services of Toronto as a cultural resource worker. Here's Rosary. Today I'll be sharing a song with you called Nikokum Nikamoy.
It's now my pleasure to introduce to you Terry Jaffe, Senior Supervisor of Cultural Programs at Native Child and Family Services of Toronto. Terry's been with the agency since 2017, working in different roles dedicated to supporting folks in their journey towards cultural reclamation. As a person adopted at birth and raised by non-Indigenous people, her journey through life has emphasized the importance of traditional knowledge, ceremony healing work, and land-based practice. Terry is a mother of three, an avid reader, and a self-proclaimed secret nerd. When she's not in the office supporting the team, you can find her at various parks and locations with a four-legged companion. Ani Bojo, greetings and welcome everybody to the third annual Honoring the Indigenous Spirit Awards. I was asked in a good way to open our time together today and so I want to say chimikwich for that and for uh, giving me the great privilege to join here today. My name is Terry Jaffe, free-flying woman, senior supervisor of the cultural programs at Native Child and Family Services of Toronto. And I just want to say chimikwich creator, thank you for this beautiful life. Thank you for the opportunity we have to share this walk and our journey together. I want to say thank you to Grandfather Sun, Grandmother Moon, Father Sky, Mother Earth, for the lands and the waters around us, for the waters in my body, for the waters in all of your bodies and the way that that water connects us. I want to say thank you for the medicines that grow on the land and for the people that harvest and prepare these medicines for our use. Creator, I want to ask you today for guidance and support for the Indigenous Spirit Fund, for those people that are stewards of this fund and for community that accesses supports. I wanna say thank you for the work of the fund. I wanna say thank you for the support that it's offered to community members and for those folks that you're gonna to meet today whose lives have been touched by the work of this fund. Chimigwich Creator for your guidance and support in this matter and in all that we do. Creator, I know that there's folks here tonight who are asking for their own prayers. And so I wanna acknowledge those prayers and know and trust that answers will be provided in a time for them and in a way that they know that you're walking with them in their journey in life. Chimigwich Creator, for bringing us all together in our own spaces and ways, for this opportunity to gather and share stories and songs. And I just ask for your blessing and support today and always. Miigwech, 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 all my relations. It's my honor to introduce the founder of Native Child and Family Services of Toronto, Ken Richard. Ken has been practicing social work, principally within Indigenous child welfare since the mid seventies. Ken has been the recipient of multiple awards, including the Toronto Civic Award of Merit, the Aboriginal Affairs Award, the Chief of Police Community Award, the Salute to the City Award for Outstanding Civic Contribution and the Diamond Jubilee Medal in recognition of Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth, 60 years on the throne. In 2018, Ken received the Meritorious Service Cross, one of the highest civilian honours awarded to Canadians from the Governor General for his achievements and actions toward contributing to the quality of Canadian life. I first met Ken about 25 years ago through my father. Ken's dedication to the community became immediately obvious to me, as did his influence on others, including myself. Ken is a very well-known and respected figure, not just in Toronto, but right across the country. His own resilient spirit embodies what these youth are being recognized for today. I'm proud to introduce to you, Ken Richard. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Indigenous Spirit Awards Ceremony. I've been asked to come and make a little comment that might set the stage for the award going forward, award recipients being recognized with a bit of a context that I might provide. This uh, Indigenous Spirit Award is about contribution and achievement, uh, but not in the usual sense. You know, so many awards, so many award stages are graced by highly accomplished young people. Uh, that have achieved in a competitive world some significance, a, the best marks in school, you know, excellence in other competitive arenas like sports and such. And those are well and good. They, that needs to be recognized. But one of the things we have been uh, aware of, and I have always wanted to say we got to do something about that, is all the countless kids who have been born into very difficult circumstance, often with significant odds stacked against them, and I don't want to numb us all with those indigenous statistics to tell you how poorly we've been doing, but that unfortunately has been a colonial reality for some time. But within all that, 
being born in difficult circumstances, having a obstacles, a lot of kids have achieved some great things. And the kids you're going to, and youth, that you're going to be seeing tonight are those that have achieved something within that context, beating back the obstacles and helping out others. Uh, within Indigenous culture, typically, I, I say this uh, generally because I have experienced that to be true, uh, the importance of living a good life is stressed, but that is defined quite differently in our culture. It's defined also as your capacity. Uh, in your own way, whatever you got, you share with others. You build each other up. And uh, these kids uh, that you uh, are gonna see tonight, these youth, are examples of that in their own way. And I'll let them tell their own stories. But I, I just want you to appreciate how special this is. Uh, there's no award like it. Tonight, five youth will be acknowledged and that's good and right. Should be 50, could be 500. When you look at the national reality of indigenous kids in care, who are graduating out of care, or, or as they say, uh, you know, being abandoned by the state. Uh, but uh, uh, notwithstanding uh, that, you start somewhere. So I am honored to be part of this process uh, and this recognition of those five youth and, and Please keep this award in mind. This uh, is funded strictly by donation and uh, your support is greatly appreciated because it certainly goes to the absolute right place. I think Randy and others will describe what we do with that award and I'll leave it at that and I say miigwech to you. And now to introduce the first award winner is Native Child and Family Services of Toronto Board of Directors President, May Maracle. May is a member of the Six Nations of the Grand River. She's a graduate of McMaster University with a Bachelor of Arts degree. She also has a Bachelor of Education from Hamilton Teachers College. May has worked for the federal government as a consultant at the Employment Equity Commission and as a consultant with the Human Rights Commission of Canada. She's retired from the City of Toronto after 25 years of service. She worked as an educator on workplace harassment, a human rights investigator, and as a consultant in equity, diversity, and human rights. I first met May as a board member over 20 years ago, and she's someone I have a deep respect for. Thank you, Randy. It's an honor to be here to introduce you to our first award winner, Cece Boisineau. Cece has had to overcome adversity since her early years. She was subjected to trauma daily and assumed the role of parent and protector for all her younger siblings. At the age of 15, Cece decided that it was in her best interest to become a Crown Ward and at the mere age of 17, she tried to bring her perpetrators to justice. Throughout all this, Cece completed high school and went on to graduate from a nursing program. Her drive for justice then led her to pursue a law degree at Osgoode Hall Law School. Cece is very passionate about injustices that the Indigenous community face and wants to be part of the solution. Cece is determined to become a part of a system that she feels needs to be fixed. Cece was recently hired to work with Indigenous lawyers Delia Opikoku, the first First Nations woman to be called to the bar in Ontario and Saskatchewan, and Josephine de Whitehall, who has been involved in matters regarding land claims and missing and murdered Indigenous women, among others. Let's meet Cece. My name is Cece Busno. I uh, am uh, an aged out Crown Ward from Native Child and Family Services. Uh, I'm currently a uh, law student at Osgoode Hall Law School. Um, and I'm sitting in a uh, longhouse in Native Child at Native Child and Family Services. Okay, where should I start? I have a parrot. Um, I taught her to to speak and uh, say I love you when she wants a treat. Uh, that's usually something that people enjoy and find uh, kind of unique and funny about me. I'm very passionate about justice. Um, although over the last uh, few years, I've learned that uh, 
law is not necessarily the best uh, tool to make justice happen and really the only way to make social justice happen is uh, by practicing with kindness. Uh, I'm especially proud to be working for Delia Opikaku. So she is a residential school survivor who um, was the first Indigenous woman to pass the bar in Ontario and Saskatchewan. Uh, she's just an amazing, kind, very intelligent person. And um, after meeting with her a few times, she reached out to me and asked me if I could help her uh, with some of the work that she's doing. And um, that's like such an incredibly huge compliment and I'm really proud um, just to be working for her and helping her out. So I feel like there's a lot of power in teaching uh, people to have control over themselves. Um, I think that people that are given power, especially in policing systems or in healthcare, um, should first be taught to have control over themselves. I've learned that having control over myself is probably the ultimate wealth. One way that I do this is uh, by noticing every thought that I have non-judgmentally. So if I notice that I'm overwhelmed, I might think, okay, I'm overwhelmed and just notice that that's a piece. Winning this award means so much to me because I've been struggling comparing myself to my colleagues who haven't gone through developmental trauma. And it's been kind of intimidating uh, being in law school with other people who maybe ha have had a little bit more supports and resources and haven't come from as many challenging experiences. And so just acknowledging that I started much further behind them and I had more barriers in front of me and I still caught up, it's, it's, it makes me feel really validated and really good and kind of offsets the kind of judgmental um, attitude that I feel towards me sometimes where I'm not good enough or not as good as my peers or my colleagues. Thank you to Native Child and Family Services of Toronto, especially the Indigenous Spirit Fund for providing me with this opportunity. It's very validating. I am very grateful and humbled to be given this award and um, I just can't thank you enough. Our next winner is Alexis Semenov. Alexis came into the care of Native Child and Family Services of Toronto at the age of five, along with the rest of her six siblings. Alexis did not let a difficult family history detract from her pursuing her goal of helping others, especially children. With the support and stability of a foster home, Alexis completed both high school and a college diploma with distinction. She completed her early childhood education diploma in December 2022 and earned a place on the President's Honour Roll at Fanshawe College. She will be returning to Fanshawe College in May 2023 to complete her ECE degree and is looking ahead to obtain her teacher's degree. Alexis has worked at the Native Child and Family Services of Toronto summer camps as a camp counsellor and volunteered in community programs. Alexa's most recent volunteer experience was at the YMCA, where she used her knowledge of child development and play-based skills to work with preschool children. She also has a volunteer experience working at a public school as a teacher's assistant. Alexis wants to leave a mark in the world with respect to helping others. Here is Alexis. Uh, my name is Alexis. Uh, my spirit name is Nijamu. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it means she who heals others. I'm also part of the Deer Clan. I'm 20 years old. I'm a very friendly person, you know, with people that I'm new to. I try to be at least. I'm also a very social person when I'm comfortable. I love learning new things and I love um, experiencing new things as well. Like. I'm applying for all these different jobs because I just love the experience of expanding my skills and my knowledge. Um, my current hobbies are skateboarding. I have a skateboard that I bought a while back and I'm excited to learn how to do that once, you know, spring comes. I'm also interested in um, learning sign language. I've always wanted to learn it, but now that I'm free, I think I'm going to take a few classes on that. 
Something that made me want to work with kids is that I just grew up surrounded by them. Like early on, I got put into these camps like Camp Oasis and Native Child Camps and it just grew an interest in me with working with children and honestly I just connected so well with the children I was surrounded with early on that I just grew a passion for working with them so that's why I wanted to get my EC diploma. Some of the challenges I would say just transitioning into being with my original family and then into foster care not knowing like it was a struggle to like know who I was apart from who I was before. So growing as an individual in foster care and then becoming this whole new person was a challenge, but obviously I overcame that now. <laughs> I would say having a support system in place is great. Like even your neighbors, your family, a teacher, anyone who could just be there to talk to. It's as simple as that. Like that's that's a simple support right there. I feel like just talking to people is a great way to relieve stress and to find a way to overcome whatever you're going through. Talking is a great mode of action, I think, in my, in my opinion. Um, one thing I'm proud of is my education. Uh, it was online for the whole two years, so I struggled socially and my mental health was poor because it was online and I basically stuck inside the house because I didn't want to go out. Um, but I managed to like get a job and then that, you know, opened my wings socially, which also helped with my mental health. Um, and I guess combining all those things, I was able to flourish in school, which um, allowed me to get on the honor roll system, which was great. That's definitely something I'm proud of. This award, and the fact that I won it is an honor for me just because I think it's great to represent the indigenous community. And also it's also beneficial because, you know, I get to meet and, you know, engage in some of the goals I have with the support from the funds. Uh, thank you to this organization and fund for supporting me and giving me this award. It means a lot. And I am so glad I was a candidate. I didn't know I was going to win, but I appreciate all of you guys. <laughs>
Now I'd like to introduce to you the first ever Honoring the Indigenous Spirit Awards winner, Gemma Maxi. Gemma was born in Regina, Saskatchewan, near his reserve, White Bear First Nations. At a young age, Gemma entered foster care, which separated him from his three siblings. He spent his whole life in foster homes and group homes. Growing up, Gemma always felt like his skin was two sizes too big because of his dual heritage. He had big dreams, however, he could never achieve them because of his aging out of the system. Gemma became addicted to drugs and alcohol. He struggled with poverty and bouts of homelessness. After his hardships, he had had enough and reclaimed his identity by becoming a warrior. He broke the cycle. In 2018, he got clean and sober. He pursued education and enrolled in college with something to prove. In April 2020, he graduated with academic honors in the social service work program at Georgian College. Gemma also received the Exemplary Learner Award upon graduation. He received the Indigenous Spirit Fund Award in 2021 for his outstanding efforts in breaking down barriers while achieving his full potential. In 2022, he was chosen as one of the Indigenous Youth Leaders in Canada and was invited to the Senate Building of Canada to deliver a speech. He was recently elected as a member of the Board of Directors at Native Child and Family Services of Toronto, where he was once a foster child. Gemma has worked at Addiction Rehab Toronto as an addiction counsellor, giving back to those in his shoes. He's enrolled at York University for a degree in psychology. He's currently developing a youth advisory circle for Nog the Winmog Banoziog Child and Family Services. His goal is to be the first ever Indigenous graduate accepted into the University of British Columbia to pursue a PhD in clinical psychology. Gemma hopes he can bring his PhD back to his Black and Indigenous communities to show youth that you can come from very little and still make it. Ani, my name is Jamma Maxi. I'm a member of the Board of Directors here at Native Child and Family Services of Toronto. I also was a previous award winner of the Indigenous Spirit Fund Award back in 2021. I'm here to tell you about the importance of the Indigenous Spirit Award. This award was recently created back in 2021 to recognize youth that are overcoming barriers. I grew up in the child welfare system my whole entire life. I grew up in Native Child and Family Services of Toronto when I turned 13 years old and I aged out of the system. Growing up in the system, I never saw youth role models. The importance of this award is to help Indigenous youth ignite that fire within them and show that they can be leaders for their community. If you're a winner of this award, I wanna thank you for all you've done for your community and know that there are so many people looking up to you and that you can make impactful change with your individual self changing who you are, overcoming those barriers, whether you're going to school, whether you're becoming a parent for the first time, there's so many of these systematic things that people don't actually recognize how hard it is coming from our community. So I just wanna thank you for being the warrior that you are. Thank you very much, Jamma. I'm looking forward to following your journey. And now, here's May Marco once again. I'd like to introduce you to the remaining recipients of the Honoring the Indigenous Spirit Awards. I'm delighted to introduce you to Amber Fujita and Trayvon Gionette. Amber is the youngest of our award recipients at 13 years of age. Amber is Ojibwe from the Garden River First Nation. Currently in grade eight, Amber aspires to study medicine and her goal is to be a neurosurgeon. Amber is a survivor of childhood sexual abuse. Her courage and resilience was on display when she gave testimony against her abuser in court, a case that is still going on. Working through the trauma of abuse and issues of abandonment by her biological mother through counseling has not stopped Amber from living a normal adolescent life. Amber spends time on social media learning how to style her hair, do her nails, and apply makeup. And she enjoys spending time with friends, loves the outdoors, and looking after her dog, Sema. Amber loves to play volleyball and has an upcoming tournament. Amber is involved with the community by attending cultural events with her father and grandfather and often helps with traditional ceremonies. I'm Amber Lee John Fujit Ingram and I'm 13 and I'm Ojibwe Cree and I live in Scarborough, Ontario. A little bit about my culture. I'm Ojibwe and Cree. My dad is Cree and my mom's Ojibwe. Um, 
honestly, I love being Native. It's just like, it's just like a strong, intelligent like thing that I just have part of me. I love going to powwows and like ceremonies like that. I just love dancing. What I find challenging about going to school is probably like, well, waking up on time is like a, not a good thing for me because I barely do it. But I try. Um, the most challenging thing is I probably think would be like bullying. Cause like there's a lot of kids that just bully kids just for no reason. Like just to make their ego look bit bigger. I I enjoy math and science. Like it's just something about like numbers that just like I love numbers. Uh, I deal with the bullying just by like ignoring them and like walking away. But sometimes it's just like hard to walk away, so you have to say something. But like I try to keep it to myself. Some of my hobbies that I enjoy is definitely volleyball. I was in a volleyball tournament recently and we won second place out of 30 schools. Some of the things I help out with are like um, naming ceremonies and four day fires and stuff like that. Something that I'm proud of is definitely how I've grown up because I was this really mean kid and then when I went to my, with my grandpa, uh, I think it changed me a lot and I'm just really proud of that. Um, I would tell them that like just to keep pushing through, it's, it, gets, it gets a lot better. Like from the times that I had, I didn't think it was going to get better at that time, but then I just kept looking forward, surrounding me, my people, I was surrounding, surrounded with the people that loved me and just, I kept pushing through. Um, social media for me is kind of like, it's connecting because like I post things, my friends comment and like like it and it's just overall like a way to connect with my friends and I love that because <laughs> my friends are like everything to me. Well, one of my friends is this girl named Keisha. We've been best friends since like grade six, maybe even five. Um, she's always been there for me. She's like the best person I've ever met in my whole life. And honestly, can't imagine a life without her actually. <laughs> we have a, ba a bad day. Um, I like to sleep a lot, so I just like sleep it off. and like take a nap or something or just like I like writing poems, so like I would just like open my notebook, grab a pencil, and just write. Um, writing kind of like blurs everything else out, and it's just that one thing that I can foc focus on, and it just helps me get a lot better. I've been writing for so many years. I write about like friendships and like my family and stuff like that. What I like about Nature Fest is just like the calmness of it. Like when I go down to the ravine, the water is just like so calming I sit on the I sit on that one rock and I just like watch the water go I don't even bring my phone with me it's just that one time where I can get away from everything and just look at things that I like me quetch indigenous spirit fun for this opportunity Trayvon Jeanette is an afro indigenous youth who faces the systemic barriers of being a member of the Black, Indigenous, and other people of color community. Trayvon's positive attitude has been a determining factor in his ability to overcome challenges. Trayvon is an active participant at the Scarborough Child and Family Life Centre, where he is an integral part of the youth community. He is involved in various athletic programs, including basketball and hockey. Trayvon is an older brother to his sisters and brothers, and he takes this role very seriously, acting as a role model for them by always showing respect to those around him. Trayvon is involved in cultural ceremony in the community and is a firekeeper, often offering to help when firekeepers are needed. Trayvon also spent last summer as a camp counselor in training at our Scarborough and Overnight Camp and continues to volunteer for Overnight Camp when needed. Uh, my name is Trayvon and I'm 15 years old. Um, I like to play a lot of sports, uh, like with friends and family. I like to play the game with like my younger brother. Uh, I also enjoy cooking with my mom sometimes and like I enjoy a lot of family time. I have a big family so I enjoy that. And I also enjoy um, traveling. It's really fun. I like to be in see new places. 
uh, that's really cool. Uh, my relationship with my siblings is uh, close. We all live in the same house, so I can't really get away from them. But uh, I love them all. Uh, I'm the second oldest, so it's really fun. I love, I love my little brother too. He's really funny. I like to see them all grow up and do different things and how they interact with each other and myself too. I became interested in fire keeping when around I was like 11 turning 12. There was a fire at Eastview and like a four day fire and my mom had asked me to go and I went and I seen like someone else in the community that was fire keeping and I sat down with them and they were explaining to me how it works and like what you do and what's like the meaning and ever since then I kind of just started fire keeping and I enjoyed it. Like back then I used to struggle like with like anger problems and like uh, like in school I used to like get out of class and like fight people so that makes me feel like I'm matured and I'm a different person. Uh, I've overcome those challenges by um, like staying busy with like stuff I enjoy like playing sports also like sometimes talking to people to get it off your chest and um, there's a lot of different ways to overcome people have different ways some people draw some people like to do like their own hobbies so you just gotta find a way for you to overcome it by yourself or with like help I've been involved with being a child since I was around and then like seven or eight I went to like the um, day camp at Eastview and then Ever since then, I've kind of just been like in programming and then I go to the drop-in a lot. Uh, some of the camp trainings, well, last March, we went to the new camp in, on Koch Lake and we did like a, a week of training there. I just finished my first aid CPR yesterday. Like I have that certificate and uh, I don't know, I really like working with kids because I have a lot of younger siblings, so I feel like it's like one of my strong suits. Uh, I like their programming, like it's really inclusive and uh, they do a lot of fun stuff. Uh, some advice I would give to younger people is um, definitely follow your heart. Don't let nobody tell you anything different, no matter what they say about you. Uh, also, like um, whatever like your passion is, whether it's like a sport or like, like if you wanna be a nurse or if you wanna be anything you work your best to do that because there's always someone trying as hard as you so you just got to be the best at what you do thank you to native child and family services of toronto and the indigenous spirit fund for this opportunity i'm really grateful and it helps a lot our final winner is toby mendoshkin a resilient and resourceful person who has faced many challenges toby has experienced much trauma in their life including abuse from a young age a family history of trauma, and caregivers with addictions issues. Through it all, Toby has persisted with their healing and continues to seek support despite their own mental health challenges. Toby has also faced much discrimination as an Indigenous person and as a trans person. Toby recently obtained housing at NAMI Res, now occupying their own apartment for the first time. Toby is endeavoring to finish their grade 12 year through adult education and is interested with working with kids and youth in a counseling capacity, similar to the support they have received from Native Child and Family Services of Toronto. Toby is also very creative and enjoys drawing and gaming. Toby worked at Anishinaabe Health Toronto for a period last year where they sought to give back to and support the community in similar ways that they themselves had received support. Toby would very much like to continue their education into college so that they can support other marginalized folks who experience trauma in their life, especially children and youth. And now, here's Toby. My name is Toby. Um, I'm 20 years old. I was born on May 2nd. Uh, I like to watch anime and play video games, and I have a cat named Luna. Um, I like to draw. I used to make dream catchers as well. I'm proud of my cat Luna. She usually comes to me whenever I'm feeling down or 
you know, she realizes something's wrong. Um, I named her Luna because she's just a completely black cat, so she's all black. And it just reminded me of, like, Luna, like, the moon and, like, Luna, you know? So some other hobbies I have, um, during the evening I like to go out for walks. Um, um, getting services from Native Child has impacted my life pretty positively. Uh, I've been receiving services for about eight years now. Um, just with like therapy and yeah. Some of my favorite memories of summer camp was just meeting new people and being on teams and, <laughs> you know, games and stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, we did like a canoe race one time and it was a lot of fun. I think I won, I don't remember. <laughs> um, some challenges I had to overcome were depression and social anxiety. It was a cultural thing at uh, the summer camp. Um, that's when I learned how to make dream catchers. And I've just continued doing it for years. <laughs> it helped me become more social and, you know, um, make more friends. Well, if I became a counselor, um, the only reason why I was, well, not the only reason, but why I was so inspired was because my stepmom actually told me that anyone can become a therapist. But really, like, what matters is um, someone has the experience who went through the exact same thing as you did as a child, and someone who could just read it out of a book. To the youth that are going through the same or similar things, such as like me and millions other of like kids and stuff, that it's normal. It's not like you know you're insane or anything. <laughs> um, winning the award, what it means? Well, it came as a surprise because I didn't know that I was even nominated. Um, I was just more shocked to know that I was picked, and I finally felt heard. And yeah. Well, the award, it could benefit me. It could um, help me get a new computer for college. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you, Indigenous Spirit Fund and Native Child Family Services. The work we do at the Indigenous Spirit Fund and Native Child and Family Services of Toronto relies on the generosity of people like you. We're all familiar with the challenges and barriers faced by the Indigenous community. And yet, according to a Canada Helps 2022 report, less than 4% of online donations were directed to Indigenous agencies and services. There's still a lot of work to be done, and this is why we need you. When you donate to the Indigenous Spirit Fund, your dollars go to direct service and programming delivered by Native Child and Family Services of Toronto all across the greater Toronto area. Programs such as the On the Land Culture Camps that offer year-round culturally granted camp experiences for urban youth and their families. Since its inception, the Indigenous Spear Fund has been striving to strengthen relationships within the private and public sector, attempting to redefine the traditional relationship between philanthropy and Indigenous communities. Simply put, you're making lives better. Again, we can't do this alone, and I'm truly grateful for the amazing partnerships we're cultivating. The event wouldn't be possible without the support of individual and corporate sponsors. I'd like to take a moment to express our sincere gratitude to the estate of Helen Stacy for their generous donation to the award ceremony. Now it's time to present the Oscar Wabeus Award. The recipient of this award will receive a beautiful handmade star blanket. The star blanket is a very important image in many Indigenous cultures. This blanket was made by master quilt maker Alice Olson Williams. Alice is an elder in our community and is renowned for her unique quilted textile works that blend expressions of Anishinaabe beliefs and ideology with reflections on contemporary social issues. I've had the pleasure of meeting Alice in her residence in Curve Lake, and she joins us now to say a few words. My name is Alice Williams, and um, I'm originally from Northwestern Ontario. Um, Trout Lake near Red Lake and I moved to Curve Lake 53 years ago. So Curve Lake's been my home for a long time. I want to congratulate the person who gets this prize. 
and I am honored to be able to make this quilt. Minajamukwe in Dijnikas, Namek Sibing in Donji, Ashadash Nanime de Nashin Subibun in Daya Oma, Ushkigimangajin Kadeg. This year, we're honored to present the Oscar Obeyes Award to Ms. Sharifa Khan, CEO and founder of Balmoral Multicultural Marketing. Sharifa is a pioneer in the industry with more than 30 years experience. Prior to founding Balmoral, she was director of corporate marketing and shareholder at one of the major marketing firms in Toronto. Sharifa is a master of putting a cultural lens to strategy, building brands and solidifying relationships with corporate and government clients. Sharifa has also built close relations with the ethnic communities and media networks that span right across the country. In 2021, Sharifa was inducted into the American Marketing Association Canadian Marketing Hall of Legends, the first person to be recognized for her achievement in multicultural marketing. Sharifa was recognized by Prime Minister John Christian for her entrepreneurial success in 1999. Amongst her many accolades, she's a recipient of both the Gold and Diamond Jubilee Awards as a trailblazer in her industry. Sharifa is on the advisory board of Ontario Media Development Corporation, an honorary advisory of the Chinese Cultural Centre of Greater Toronto. She sits on the Board of Governors at Mount Sinai Hospital, and she's a past vice chair of OCAD University. Sharifa has been a force in advocating for Indigenous issues and has worked with the Indigenous Spirit Fund and Native Child and Family Services of Toronto on a number of initiatives, including fundraising dinners, golf tournaments, and events in partnership with the Chinese community. The Indigenous Spirit Fund is grateful to count her as a community partner and friend, and we look forward to continuing our partnership and strengthening our relationship. Now, here's Sharifa to say a few words. Hi, I'm Sharifa Khan, President and CEO of Balmoral Multicultural Marketing. Our agency has been established for 34 years, and our role is to be helping corporates and government and nonprofit organizations be engaged and connected with a diverse community across Canada. In the past, a lot of brands and corporates were not really paying attention to immigrants that are growing in leaps and bounds in Canada. So our job at the agency to ensure that brands are paying attention to them because they are consumers, they are advocates, they're supporters of brands and government. So we have been very successful over the past 34 years in connecting them and making sure there are partnerships between corporate and multicultural communities. It was a few years ago, I must say, that we had the opportunity to get to know my husband and I, to get to know the Children Family Services. Uh, and of course, uh, we got to know Ken Rishar very well. So we were introduced by him as to what kind of services that the agency has and how is it supporting its indigenous communities. Both my husband and I were very impressed because I think the indigenous community and especially its children are vastly neglected by mainstream Canada. And it's only until now because of the reconciliation issue that this community is put into the forefront. The indigenous community is actually our forefathers who are the initial inhabitants of Canada. And my husband and I feel that as immigrants uh, here, that we have a role to play. We have a role to play in building bridges of understanding between mainstream community and the indigenous community, between the immigrant community and also the indigenous community. We were very impressed with what the uh, Native Child Services have done and also the very fact with the objective of the Indigenous Spirit Fund. So we have over the past few years um, have uh, staged events that are building understanding and collaboration uh, through golf tournament, through dinners, so that there will be more engagement moving forward. One of the things that we feel that is so important to support the Indigenous Spirit Fund because this fund supports the, its children. Its children with 
facilitating opportunities for them to go to camp and also giving them awards for education, which is very important to move the future of these children forward, to pave a way that they would have a brighter future. I'm very honored today to be able to get in, getting this award because I think that it's not just for me, it's also the, the spirit of collaboration that my husband have built between the Chinese community, between the mainstream community with the um, children family services. Um, we're doubly happy because um, this is an award that is given to me and my husband for the efforts that we have put through. And we are very passionate about continuing this effort because it does make such a difference for these children. And we are totally dedicated to be able to help the family services and the fund to, to be able to get more attention in mainstream uh, corporations and also in front of government. I hope we were able to demonstrate to you the passion for what we do. You've heard five award recipients, Cece, Alexis, Amber, Trayvon, and Toby share their stories. There are thousands of similar stories across the country where youth have come together to overcome adversity and have helped others do the same, including all the nominees that were put forward to the Indigenous Spirit Awards. Relationships are at the core of what we do, and I'm so grateful for all those who support our work. And now to bring the event to an end, I'm happy to welcome back Rosary Spence and Terry Jaffe. Wow, thank you everybody. What a beautiful time together. I really enjoyed hearing the stories and the sharing, uh, listening to the songs, chi miigwech to all of our drummers and singers and all the folks that have come together to make this event such a beautiful happening. When I think about the Indigenous Spirit Fund and the supports that it gives, especially to our cultural camps, I've got to go back, I think it's at least 10 years, to my first experience with Native Child Family Services of Toronto. Uh, as a struggling single mom, but wanting my children to have land-based cultural experiences, I was ecstatic and overjoyed to find out that Native Child did run cultural camps. And so my younger two children had the benefit of Native Child and Family Services day camps, as well as experiences at uh, Overnight Camp Grundy and our new camp uh, up by Kawartha. It was a beautiful part of our family's cultural journey. It was an important part of our story of cultural reclamation, that my children were able to receive teachings from elders and knowledge carriers, that they were able to get out of the city and be on the land. I get a little emotional, wow. Because it brought us together in a, in a different way. And it brought me to this work that I do, which enables me to support others in their cultural reclamation journey. I'm just so grateful, I'm so humbled to be able to be here in this position to share my story and this journey with all of you. And to know that the Indigenous Spirit Fund has touched my own heart, as well as the lives of so many people that are dear to me. So I wanna thank the ancestors for supporting us in this work, for being with us today in this event, but supporting this journey always and for everybody. I know that all of you have ancestors and that those are coming together now in celebration. And I wanna thank them for their guidance and support. Chi miigwech, all my relations. Thank you all for being here. And this next song is a closing song.
Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to find out more about the Indigenous Spirit Fund, please visit indigenousspiritfund.org. Miigwech.